podcast number four. You guys made it in the top five. That's awesome. I'll take it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's really just because I couldn't find anybody else yeah, to do I it. So I, pre- I appreciate you filling <laughs> yeah. in. Yeah. All <laughs> the funny guys you had to fill in. Yeah, yeah, try funny. not to talk at the same time over there, guys. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be tough. We'll, be, we'll make that might, it. That might be tough. We'll make it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So, Ben McKenzie, yes, little sir. brother. Nick Cremonese, brother-in-law. Um, appreciate you guys coming. Thanks for having us. No problem, man. Yeah. Um, I know we've done a little trial run with the podcast thing a few times, but it just turns into us drinking beer and yeah, feel miserably trying to record it, and then it turns into, okay, let's not put that on the internet. Yeah. And, yeah, we're not in the kitchen anymore. No. Yeah. It's a yeah. little more professional. Pretty yeah. impressive here. <laughs> McKenzie Thanks. Contracting. I'm glad the, the McKenzie <coughs> Podcast Studio is impressing you guys. Heck of a studio, man. It really is. Yeah, you know, only took me six months to get it all set up and going, but it's here. Better late than never. Yeah, I, I feel like this is just as much as – you could probably do a full-blown, like, really popular podcast or something like this. This is probably better than most of them, honestly. Yeah, I mean, I can't imagine there's more than this. No. You got lights, cameras, yeah. headphones. I mean, <laughs> yeah. hell. Very professional. Yeah, yeah appreciate it. You know, don't do anything half ass around here, you know? No. Um, okay, so that's a little introduction for everybody that doesn't know you guys. Ben, little brother. Yeah. Union Steam Fitter. Yep. Um, when did you – so you're Steam Fitter, D.C. Union 602, right? That's right. Local 602. That's right. Um, what year did you graduate the apprenticeship? Graduated in 2016. Started when I was uh, 20. I guess 2021. 20, but, um, yeah, been doing it for 10, 11 years oh. now. And, uh, yeah, I mean – Kind of started off as a helper, did that for a couple months, and then got into school and worked as an apprentice for five years. It was a five-year apprenticeship school. And then after that, you just kind of, you know, you become a journeyman after graduation and kind of work your way up the ladder as far as you can in a, in a company, and that's about it, man. Yeah. So you've been in the trade for 10 years. Yeah. And you've been a journeyman for probably five. Yep. I've, okay. been, a, I've been a foreman now for about... Two, two and a half years. Right. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So I'm going to, we'll come back and talk about that a little bit. But yeah. Nick, Burnt Mills Auto Body. Yeah, man. Family owned business. Yeah. You've been there for a dec- like two decades. Yeah, I've been there for, for a long <laughs> time. Well, you, all you guys were in college. I was working. Yeah. You know, I never That's went cool. to school. Yeah. Um, painted for 10 years. And uh, now I'm in the office, you know, writing estimates and figuring that whole thing out. Yeah. And yeah. it's, in Silver Spring. Yeah. You know, with insurance companies and stuff like that, you know. Yeah. But so you're just now getting into the managerial side Just of that. within the last year. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but the majority of the time I was there, I was, you know, a painter's helper or painting. Yeah. So that was, you know, the big thing that I did there. Yeah. So I think the so. kind of like the topic I kind of want to start this conversation on is just young dudes, blue collar, in the workforce, Working 50 hours a week, yep. just getting after it. I think it's kind of like a breath of fresh air for people to know that there are young dudes out there, like in their 30s, that are just working their asses off every day. You know, because, like, I feel like there's just such a, like a misconception out there right now of young people that aren't doing shit and the country's going to hell because people aren't willing to work. But I would, I think that's not true. I think there's plenty of us, like people like us out there doing – the grind every day. Well, not oh, even willing to work, willing to work hard. I mean, what we do, especially what I do, I mean, it's not easy at all. Yeah. I mean, you're getting dirty, you're sweating, sometimes you're bleeding. I mean, it's it's not easy work. So, I mean, to come in every day and do that and make it a career, I mean. Especially this time of year. Very yeah. hot. You know, so yeah, you go, through hot. Some, you go through some shirts. Absolutely. And some Miller Lights. Yeah. yeah. Well, not so much on gov- government <laughs> yeah. property. Yeah. Yeah. Right now, I'm yeah. at NIH, right in Fauci's backyard. So, yeah. I don't think I don't think I can drink through my mask. <laughs> You're still wearing a mask at work. NIH, man, you got to. You got to wear it inside and outside. There was that ever a thing before the pandemic? Like you just had to wear a mask because you're in a fucking science building? No, no, not there. I mean, depending on where you're working at, you might have to wear some like booties and put on clean clothes, but. Yeah, that's you don't see that a whole lot. I, mean, I was used to wearing respirators anyway. I was wearing them all day anyway. Yeah, it's your trade. That's I, what you do. Yeah, I mean that's just so that really wasn't a 
a big deal for me, you know. Right. So. Okay. But. Yeah, I know. That hasn't – the whole mass pandemic thing hasn't affected me at all either. I mean – A lot of your work's outside. We're, we're outside, and I mean, I did. I made a couple small changes, like cleaning trucks more often and putting only putting two people in a truck and not four, you know, not cramming everybody into one vehicle. Yeah. So, I mean, it did make a little bit like that, but we never missed any work. Y'all never missed any work. No. Nope. Nope. I would say the blue <laughs> – the blue collar fields definitely we never missed a day. were the backbone that just said, you know what? I mean, we're going to work through this shit. No, yeah. no, never missed I mean, one we were day. considered essential for some reason. Yeah. I guess buildings still had to be put up. I mean, right. yeah. we never missed it. People's cars had to get worked on. You know, it was a big deal. So Yeah, I yeah. mean, very fortunate. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Well, well I, I think the down. car industry, like, I would assume people are driving less. Uh, when it first started, people were definitely driving less. I was driving yeah. from here to Bethesda without hitting the brakes. Yeah. I mean, it, I mean, it was definitely It noticeable. seemed like people still wanted to get their cars worked on, though. It's like, they, you know, if they didn't need it, they wanted it to be reliable. You know, we were busy. You know, I think we got a little bit slow for maybe a month, maybe. Yeah. And it kind of just picked up back to normal. People wanted their car to be reliable. Right. Or they got out in front of their house, even though they're not driving it. Yeah. They still needed it eventually. And if they didn't need it, they needed it to be. Or they got more time to take it to get maintenance. Yeah. It's exactly. like, look, I'm not doing shit on Thursday morning, so let me go get a you know, oil change. And they got uh, the you know, the checks. Right. You know, so. Yeah, and while we're on the topic, too, it's kind of crazy how the whole thing changed, uh, like, our apprenticeship school. Because, you know, a lot of guys, especially myself, I got into that because, you know, I'm not a tech guy. I'm not a college guy. I'm not a computer guy. You know, I wanted to work with my hands, and that's kind of what, you know, the trade school offers, and that's what kind of draw uh, you know drew me to it. But now, you know, with all the lockdowns and everything like that, a lot of these guys that are in the apprenticeship school have to do online classes and do everything online. And a lot of them are looking like, you know, it's not what I signed up for, man. Are you tell me I got to get on a computer four hours a night, for, you know, two nights a week. He's like, yeah, I don't want to do that. I want to be hands on. So it's kind of those guys are definitely missing out on some. Some things that, not only that know, but other quali- guys like the quality control for you guys, like you're not getting the same education you got actually being no, there. For sure. like, how, how the hell can you solder copper pipe online? Yeah, you can't do that. Yeah, that's the whole debate. It's like, yeah, how, how am I taking this piping class yeah. online? It's, it just doesn't make right. sense. It's like, they a, have to, they have to do it. It's like watching a YouTube video on like how to build a barn, and right? Then you try to build a barn, it's gonna look like shit. right? All you did was watch a YouTube video, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, man, I think it's just, uh, I think everybody like us, which is just young blue collar working dudes, everybody's on the same page. Absolutely. And it's not, it's not just like people that look like us. I'm just talking people that work for a living, like truck drivers, uh, loggers. They don't want to stay home. Body, you know, like body mechanics, painters. You steam know. fitters, plumbers. I mean, every, it's like, dude, I'm not staying home five days a week. Like, no. I'm going to go do shit. You want to yeah. work. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so. And it's just, it's it's crazy that this shit came up, like, in the first eight minutes of doing yeah. this. But, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's why I said while we're on the topic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, but it's just so crazy because I, I honestly feel like people that do stuff like us are the backbone of everything. And it's not in us to not do what we do. Yeah. Like you're going to get up every day and go make a living. Like you're not going to get up and not go to Burnt Mills. No, no. I'd be there even if they, you know, told us not to. Even if there's no customers there, you're going yeah. to go. I mean, if I hit the lottery, I probably won't ever steam fit again. I'll tell you that. But it doesn't look like that's happening anytime soon. Yeah. So that's a good question. Yeah, but you're not going to earn a pay. You're not going to stay home and not earn a paycheck. No. I mean, even no. when I'm not working, I'll come help you out and you know, yeah, pick Depends up on sticks how much and for it. yeah, yeah, that's true too. <laughs> Yeah. Man, I hit the lottery. Yeah. Twenty five dollars. Yeah. That's <laughs> retirement money. Entirely not enough. <laughs> Another uh, thing too though is there's no inventory for new cars. There's none. And I think that's why, you know, shops like ours, you know, smaller family owned businesses are staying busy. People are putting money into their cars that they probably wouldn't have. Right. Because they're you they can't buy it. Man, anymore. I think that is just even if they Any wanted industry. to buy one. Like, dude, it's just so hard to get material for yeah. anything right now. Um, We're having that problem, too, so. Okay. What about your jobs, Ben? Like, the like flanges and ordering pipe and steel and hangers and shit like that? I mean, is it yeah. hard to get? Or Yeah. Um, pipe, not so much. I mean, it's definitely affected us a little bit, but a lot of, like, equipment 
it's uh you're definitely seeing like a big lead time on all that you know you'll call and price something out and be like yeah we can get it to you in you know eight months from now it's like well you know shit we're trying to do this job in the next you yeah. know couple months yeah, it's got to be done yeah i would say equipment's the big one but uh, the prices of steel and everything like that has gone up but you're still i think the price of steel's gone up even more than lumber so yeah, I, I would like here maybe, recently it has it, like maybe not like you seeing it directly being the guy that installs it, but I would assume it's right. affecting like the financial side of that industry right. like crazy. Which that's something I don't see a whole lot. Being a foreman, you don't do a lot of the pricing and stuff. That's kind of led you know left to the project managers and stuff like that. But I mean, you know, they tell us what's happening and things like that. So I mean, yeah. we have a little bit of an idea. But the whole pricing aspect like, of yeah, the it's job like, look, man, we, we can't have any waste on this job. Right. Because we just paid like we bought 80 you. times more for this pipe than we ever have. Yeah. We like, bought, more you, we bought you just you. enough, so <laughs> right. don't yeah. fuck it up. Yeah, that puts a lot more pressure on you. Yeah. Of we course. just had to deliver a car today with a part missing. You know, because we just couldn't get the part. The guy had to be, you know, people need their cars. The guy had to go to uh, his daughter's graduation. And uh, we didn't come get the car, but th- there's a piece that we can't get. Yeah. You know. And, no shit. And yeah. What was it? It was just a a, a tire, a backup sensor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's driving with a spare. Yeah. No, it was like a. Here's backup your car back. Sensor. It's got one missing tire. Yeah, exactly. So we had to put a spare on there. Yeah, but you had to drive to Boston. And here's your invoice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was five thousand dollars. Yeah. He was, he's, they're pretty cool about it. Everyone's pretty. Um, you know, they There's they know what's going on. Yeah, exactly. Everyone's yeah. kind of in the same position. It's, the guy was like, you know, he was in construction. Yeah. He's like, I can't get materials. He goes, I totally understand. Which is awesome. It's yeah. I th- honestly, I th- you know, I, I don't know this for sure because I don't talk to anybody really outside of Calvert County. But I think it's a global issue. It's smart of you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not just a state issue. It's not just us. It's not. Yeah. It's not even just our country. I think it's, it's like everywhere. worldwide. Like yeah. shit's just you can't get anything. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, you're dealing with your house. Yeah, trying to build a house, man. It's like you know, like Carly and I are like, well. Do we even start? Because the day you break ground, you got to decide what doors and windows you want because yeah. they, they're not going to be here for six or seven months. Garage doors, siding, shingles. I mean, it take twice as long. Yeah. So, how are you supposed to build a house and in a reasonable price. amount of time? Yeah. Because when you get a construction loan to build a house, you're paying interest on that construction loan the whole time you're building. Exactly. So, if you're waiting on certain shit for, Eight, 10, 12 months, you're paying interest on that whole loan. So, hopefully, everything's I don't know. getting back, more, you know, to normal, whatever I, that is. But I hope it. I mean, doesn't really it look like. Looks like shit's that, going yeah, in the opposite direction right now. Yeah, you know, and it's not cool. Yeah. So, no. and maybe that's I don't playing know. all along. Luckily, we're now in, we can talk about conspiracies. Yeah, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm down. Conspiracies or government or politics or it's a fucking. Rabbit hole, man. Yeah. Luckily, we're trying not here. to go down that rabbit hole. Yeah. I'll, I'll get into it with you. <laughs> After the show. I go to the loony bin with yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. But no, we're lucky we're down here in Calvert. You know, it's a, it's a different world down here to us, at least, you know. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's, we're lucky to live in a cool place like this. Yeah. It's, um, and it's crazy to say, I mean, it's, it, we're lucky to have the federal government because they're going to keep spending money. I know a lot of the work. I've done in my career is, you know, for the government. Yeah. So, I mean, living in this area, it's almost a little recession-proof because, I mean, those jo- those projects don't stop. Yeah. I mean, dude, I'm the same way. Like, I, I don't do any federal government work, but I do a lot of government work, like local county governments and state government. And yeah, they ain't stopping. They're not going to stop. No. I mean, they're going to get their money <laughs> either way. I mean, <laughs> so. that, that's why this is a wealthy area. I mean, definitely – Fortunate to live in a area like this where we weren't as, you know, affected as much. Yeah. No, people definitely underestimate Calvert County. There's a lot of money down here. There's a lot of cool stuff to do. Well, don't say that for the I internet. Was say yeah. Don't tell people to come down here, man. Yeah. Stay right, we'll where you're at. Cut that one out. <laughs> 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 That's but funny, man. No, uh, it's it's, cool it's true though. And Calvert's growing like crazy too. It man. is. Um, Which is a good thing. You know. Like like Ben, where Taylor lives, those apartments, brand new apartments. I mean, those apartments in Prince Frederick, I'm still not convinced that they're not going to be horrible for the county. But I've never been there. Man. But, like, Ben, what kind of demographics in there right now? Uh, I mean, it's 
pretty normal. I mean, I would say a lot of the people that I see are, you know, in their 40s or 50s. I mean, yeah. but, yeah, I mean, I see over time where I could, I could see it not being so well because there's not a lot of, you know, affordable, smaller places for young people just starting out in Calvert. It's usually, you know, we have decent-sized homes around here. Yeah. So if you're a young person wanting to live in Calvert, I mean, there's not a lot of options until now. In those oh, yeah, apartments. 100%. There's yeah. kind of apartments that have never existed. Right. But, until I mean, what's hard, though, is young people like us that grew up in the county. You're seeing you, a lot you, of change. You need somewhere to, to, to live, but at the same time, when you bring in lower-income housing, oh yeah, it's not all people like us that are in there. Right. It's people you don't want in your community that are in there. Right. Well, that um, one... I mean, because there's a lot of apartments back there. Yeah, man. There is. It's crazy. That's what I'm saying. I think right now it looks fine, but, you know, you give it 10, 15, 20 years, I mean, who knows what it's going to look like. Yeah, right. I mean, no, you're right about that. Yeah. But um, they seem nice, though. They are they, nice. They don't they're seem at, they're really nice on the lower end. Yeah. But in time. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, this is kind of like a random subject, man, but – I can't believe I just got my permits to build my house uh, two days ago. So 70 acres, trying to be, get a permit to build one house on 70 acres. How long did that take? Ten months. Ten months to get yeah. that permit. Crazy. I, and dude, it, it's just it's just a slow process. It's not just slow, man. But the like, and I didn't do myself They're a whole lot of difficult. favors because, yeah. like, honestly, like. They wanted me to sign shit that I didn't sign, um, and it was just shit that I didn't agree to. Yeah, that the government's trying to get you to literally sign rights away. What is it that you don't agree with? Uh, like certain conservation areas and like on stuff your property on my property. Yeah, like forest conservation. Like, um, they want to change something on like, your land. Yeah, no. Well, they pretty much say like if you clear an area for a house. Yeah. Well, this section of woods right here, we're going to rope off, and you cannot cut any trees in that section. How do you get I, around that? I got around that because my property's big enough, and it, I have it in ag preservation with, like, a forestry management plan already. So I was like, dude, I'm not signing that, and I'm not agreeing to that because I'm already managing the forest that I have a certain way. Mm-hmm. You can't tell me I can't cut shit on there because the management plan that I have says I can. Yeah. So anyway, it's just stuff like that that just kind of – Delayed most most m- it delayed my process, and most people would just say like, "Yeah, whatever, you know, whatever, you know, just sign it." But like, you're literally giving rights away that you have. It's like I can cut timber on my f- property on my farm and make money on it. And luckily, a lot. And of now people, you're telling me I can't do that. Well, a lot like, of people are trying to build a house a lot quicker than you are too. That's true. You know, yeah. you have you know you're already in a house. Yeah. That it, yeah, I'm you, not in a bad spot. If I you're don't have to if leave. you're trying to do something in a certain period of time. That's probably why most people would sign something like that. Right. And then, but you can fight it at yeah. least, which is cool. But it's just like government overreach, man. Like the whole, and it, it's just across every spectrum. Yeah. County level, state level, federal level. I'd really think just the government is just way too involved in everything. Yeah, it seems they it's just getting need to, worse too. Yeah. It's just it's getting, getting worse. And people are complying with it, which just makes me. That's what I was about to say. Bonkers, man. Yeah. I'm just like, dude, like, you're not going to tell me what I can and can't do and what I have to do. Like, I, I will never let anybody do that to me. No. no. It's kind of what they're doing. Not to me. It. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I haven't worn a mask in a long, long time. I've had that argument a lot. Well, luckily, you know, we don't have to wear them for now. But Yeah, but it's going back. It is. It seems and like honestly, now I direction. feel like it's like, well, even the people that wore masks at first – and played by the rules. Now they got vaccinated, and then the government's going to say you st- you, get, you got to, still got to wear a mask. Yeah, they're going to be like, no, I'm not doing that now. I already pl- I already did what you told me to do. Yeah, I think Fauci was on the other night talking about that. So crazy. Yeah, like the vaccinated people are more dangerous than the people that aren't because the vaccinated people can carry it or something, and then they can't get it because they're vaccinated, but they can give it to all the people that aren't. Oh my god, <laughs> something like that. Nobody knows. I'm probably wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it seemed like that's what he was saying. That's what you got out of it. Right? Yeah, that's what I got. Everyone, everyone, who, everyone who talks about it is wrong. <laughs> yeah, no one's, no one knows. No what's one up. knows what's going on. It's true. Yeah. It's so confusing. It is very confusing. Why is it? It shouldn't be that confusing. No. Yeah. Talking about it came from some damn bat. Yeah, it started with a bat. <laughs> yeah. Didn't it? <laughs> I don't know. 
And you know what's funny, man? Like, people talk about this shit because it's, it's been a big deal for the last year and a half, right? Like, it's changed the whole world and how the world works. But just for me, right, and, like, my little world, like, my company and the guys that I work with, nothing's changed. Nobody's scared of it. Nope. Nobody is like, hey, get away from me. Nobody's like, hey, put on your mask. Nobody's like, hey, man, fuck, I can't work today because, you know, this dude might have coronavirus. Like, in y'all's work environment, are people talking about it, like, where they're scared or no? I mean, but people took advantage of it when it first started. Especially, I, yeah, especially yeah, yeah. apprentices, because you know, Maryland was handing out that extra unemployment. So right. apprentices could take a layoff, and with their unemployment plus that extra, they would make more than they would going to work. Yeah, right. So I mean, I yeah. mean, hell, why not? I mean, why not? You can make more money and not work. I mean, I was in all these people's cars. That's very personal. You get in someone's car. It's not, you know, that's their that's little true. world. You know, yeah. it's some people are messy. Some people, it's just like probably. Relates probably to their houses and stuff. Yeah. Hey Ben, you know. what's what kind of dirty shit have you done in your truck? Exactly. I won't say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, keep, I, keep the tr- I keep the truck pretty clean <laughs> yeah. for the most part. <laughs> but you know, I don't know Nick it's, like, it's like it. it's like your private space, man. No, you got a clean yeah. truck. What did but you do to it? What's wrong with your truck? It was uh, the starter yeah, went out. Yeah, you had to replace the starter in it. Uh, we just put it. Back how you like home. working overtime on a Saturday? Get in your truck and just won't start. Yeah. Everyone everyone already just drives away. Ben calls me Saturday. I just got done crabbing or something. He's like, yeah, I'm broke down in uh, Rockville <laughs> or something. Somewhere like that. Yeah. I'd be like, yeah. well, fuck you. <laughs> yeah. I, got, I got Jimmy's on the trot line right yeah. now, yeah. bro. So. As, as, as I'm turning the key, nothing will start. I just see everyone's trucks driving away. Yeah. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> Ugly uh, Taylor, my great girlfriend. Yes. Drove all the way from Prince Frederick to yeah. Bethesda to come get me. She helped you out a lot. Helped me out a lot on that one. Morton Stone. Pretty solid. Yeah, you probably Stone. owe her a dinner or two. Yeah. Yeah. I paid her back. Yeah. <laughs> With dinner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Morton's towing. Yeah. He came and got me. Yeah. I, t- great, I tipped that guy pretty well. Getting into NIH is definitely a ball, ball buster. Yeah. So he came in cussing at me because he had to go through security. I already had money waiting for him. I was like, I, s- I know, man. I'm sorry. So I got some old shit, like old trucks. That stays local in the county. I got old dump trucks, old uh, chipper trucks. I even, now I got an old '92 bucket truck. Right, I have I, some. I old, a couple of. I, I, I have some old shit. Yeah, and <laughs> I'll call Southern Maryland Towing, or I'll call Chips Towing, and I know them like, hey man, yep, International broke down down yeah. Busby. All right, Gene. Yeah, we'll be down there in a few minutes. <laughs> like they know me by first name. Those guys. You can't have all new shit. No. I mean, I have a lot of new shit, but I also have a lot of old shit. And it, it might cost me five, 600 bucks a month to fix something, but I can't make, you know, you buy a new six wheel dump truck right now, it's going to cost you, you know, 80 grand, 90 grand. It's crazy. So, nope, I'll just keep running the old shit, fix it as I need to. Yeah, I mean, I don't blame you. Those tow truck drivers deal with some shit. Yeah. They I'll do. I guarantee it. Oh, they, yeah, I like it too, to where <laughs> I'll call them, I'll be like, hey, man, uh, there's two guys in the chipper truck. I need you to go pick up the truck and then give yeah. the guys a ride back to the shop. And it's pouring rain. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> guys smell like shit. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's a bunch of chainsaws they got to put in the cab of your yeah. truck. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Pretty much a complete nightmare. Yeah. Please go help me. And the truck's loaded. <laughs> yeah. Heavy. Uh, those guys have seen that. I mean, they do. They if that's your job, I mean, I'm sure you can run into that shit all the time. They do. Yeah. You know. But, I uh, see uh, your YouTube channel is getting pretty popular. Yeah. I see a couple of your videos got... Over a thousand views, I think I have one right now. It's like at like three or four thousand. Yeah, man. Yeah, we're working on it. Yeah, it's it's, uh, it's good shit. Yeah, I mean, I obviously I don't do all that myself, but you know, I'm involved. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it still has to reach out. And the whole process is kind of coming together. I think it just takes time. Yeah. Like honestly, like oh, you can't say, "Hey, I'm gonna put a fucking YouTube video up and I'm gonna get twenty thousand views." No, no. It, you know, like what well, has to takes, be something you know people want to watch. I guess yeah. you're starting to that's kind of word of mouth too. I mean, yeah. you, people are sending you know sharing the videos and stuff like that. Yeah, it just starts spreading around. Yeah, yep. I mean, are you able to get on there and look at the people who viewed it and see like where they're from? I mean, are people in you know California maybe clicking on that to see? Yes, the we can. On that? You can tell who Gene likes personally the video. can't do that. I don't know how to do that, but I can like set up a meeting to like with the marketing right, guy right. that's like. 
he's like, hey, this is who viewed this video. Right. <laughs> yeah. Can you tell who like, likes he, it? He, he explains it to me in, like, the ways that I get it. Yeah. Um, I don't know if likes really even matter with YouTube. I don't think it's likes. I think it's with YouTube, it's, uh, like, views or subscribers. Views are probably yeah. the, yeah. the likes. Well, I think you want subscribers because those yeah. are people that, like, get notified every time I post a video. Yeah. Like, that's kind of what you want. Yeah. Um, and as far as I know. Uh, but, yeah, it's cool. I mean, the the online presence thing is definitely time-consuming to the point where I hired somebody that does that. Like, they handle Like, this podcast will be edited and uploaded yeah. and done by somebody else because I don't know how to do that. That's not what I'm good at. But it's very important being a small business. Like, if you do residential work and you work for, like, individual people, it's very important to have online presence to where – if they Google you or they go on YouTube to look for something, you're towards the top of the page. Yeah. yeah. That's what people do now. People don't look at shit in a newspaper or a magazine. They're on their phone. Yeah. I read the newspaper every day. Yeah, you were saying that you uh <laughs> you just hired a new crew. You got a big project or you got a Yeah, man. Yeah. I have a uh excavating crew now. Full time. Like we've done excavating for quite a while. I mean, I have I've had machines and trucks and stuff. And we've done it in-house, you know, just, like, between me and other guys. But it's kind of gotten to the point where it's full-time to the p- – where I just have guys that just do that now, like, you know. So – which is exciting, you know. I mean, I, I've been trying to get into that bigger work, and I finally have the trucks and the equipment and now guys that know how to do it. And it's staying steady, you know. They go from job to job to job. And, yeah, I man, mean, it's exciting. Yeah, I'm exciting for it. I mean, it's – uh. It's fun. I mean, finding good help is hard, and I think I found a couple of good guys. And you know, the plan is to keep them working full time and yeah, man, keep it rolling. Yeah, man, your guys I mean, seem good. Finding good help is definitely hard to do. And that's yeah. like something. What and anyone in the trades will tell you. I mean, not you know, construction workers aren't you know, <coughs> all angels. I mean, you no. you definitely uh, go through your pile of dirt bags until you can you know you can find yeah, yeah a lot some of good bag. guys. So what, what they did over my parents' house the other day was insane. Those guys, yeah, we took some shit down. Over were there, strategically dude. moving stuff. I mean, it was the cool cleanup crew watch. with like the excavator and yeah. stuff. Yeah, man. I mean, they got that thing on a angle like this. You know, it's, it's it was just super impressive. That's what we do, bud. Yeah, every day. Absolutely. You know I didn't, it doing. didn't look like anyone would be able to do get that cleaned up. Yeah, man. Got to call the right guys. You know, got to have the right shit, the right people, right it's tools. Cool. That's important too. Right tools is important. Yeah. I don't skimp on tools no. or equipment. I mean, you can't. You're just hurting yourself. Like, if I tell, you know, if I tell a crew to go out and do something, they got to have the right shit to do it. Yeah. If not, you're setting them up for failure. And well, that's see, that's the worst. Yeah. And honestly, I've worked for people that set you up for fucking failure. Yeah. And it's like, look, man, like, you know this isn't fucking feasible. Yeah. Like, you're about to, like, you're going to yell at me tomorrow because you know I can't do this job today. Right. You're, you're wasting man <laughs> yeah. hours because yeah. we got to do things, you know, the caveman way. Yeah. How about you just spend a couple hundred bucks? Then you'll have the tool forever. Yeah. Well, I mean, a, why not? It's, a, come, like, it's, it's couple, usually more than a couple hundred tens bucks. Of well, maybe in your case, but yeah. I've, I've worked for people where all you need is like a couple, like little tools. Yeah. They right. And they act, like they, the they, yeah, they act like they don't want to get it. Yeah. Right. It's like, like well, why? Well, what the fuck? And then guys are like, all right, well. I mean, if you don't care to buy his fucking tools, I don't really give a shit to work. Yeah. yeah. Well, then there and, you go. You know, it, I mean, it goes so, a long way. Because, like, look, man, like, you guys work with your hands and you work, like, doing, like, putting stuff together every day. I'm, like, in the managerial side of it where, like, I look at the numbers and I look at, like, right. what each crew has and then what they're making and what I can spend mm-hmm. on each crew every week or every month or whatever. And there is, it does come to a point, especially when shit starts breaking. Where you're like, hey, man, like, this crew had, (laughs) let's keep it simple, right? Like, look, man, I just bought you, like, three shovels, like, two months ago. I can't afford to buy you three shovels every fucking month. Right. Like, like you got to start taking care of the shovels. Yeah. Breaking shovels. But then you take that and you, like, make it bigger, like, with, like, trailers and with dump trucks and with excavators. It's like, look, I can't buy a new excavator every year. So you're going to have to start taking care of the excavator. Like, See, you, you are the man. I work for the man. So, I mean, I understand at the end of the day, I mean, it's it's all a business. But to me and the guys, you know, you know yeah. it's, it's about craftsmanship and it's about, like, you know, actually installing it and stuff like that. So, right. so I mean, you have to hear, like, a little grief when you ask for stuff and, you know, you get yeah. backlash. But it's, at the same time, it's, 
I mean, the best way to get your guys to work is to keep them happy. You yep. know what I mean? Yep. But I understand there's a, you know, you know, there's a thin line there, but because, yeah, you give guys It tools, is, because, like, the company then overall. Then they leave it laying it somewhere, and then they say they lost it. It's like, well, well, I mean, yeah, I guess figure it, it out now, you, man. You, you got to start being held accountable, man. Like, right. you know, like, um, like you that, guys might use grinders a lot, right? Right. Like a Milwaukee four-and-a-half-inch grinder, grinder. Grinder nuts always go missing. A grinder nut. Just the smallest little thing. It's like, look, dude, like, I can't buy you a fucking grinder every two weeks. Right. Well, those, you probably bought those, didn't you? Or no, well, I mean, that's the thing those. about being union uh, contractor supply, all the tools. All you need is a couple hand tools, and then. What about you, man? Like, working yeah. for a small family business, like, how's that work as far as, like, your guys that work for you? Like, they, do you I mean, supply all their fucking tools? No. Or, I think a lot of the mechanics <laughs> and shit. They buy their own tools. They look buy their own tools. $50,000 yeah. worth of tools. That's so Maybe cool. even more, yeah. Like, dude, if I could hire people and be like, hey, man, bring your own chainsaw tomorrow. Well, like, see, the that would be like, same with body it would save men. me so much money. Body men buy all their own tools. Painters do the same thing, but, you know, being a car painter, you don't need a lot. Right. Well, you know. See, but you're you're working in, at a shop where you pretty much, you know, trust everyone around you. If you're on, a, bi- if you're on a big job site and you got all these different trades around you, a lot of times tools walk. Yeah, we're working And then it's like, the well, shit, now I'm down day. a couple then hundred bucks. it's a bucks. fucking issue. Yeah. yeah. So that's why guys. And that's, I think that's. Just industry wide, man. Like I- anybody that works with tools has that problem. Oh yeah. And then guys borrowing tools. Yeah. Because I've been borrowing on jobs too where there, you know, there's like sixty steam fitters, and you know, not everyone's going to get all the nice power tools. You guys are going to yeah. have to share. Right. I mean, yep. And you're trying to get something done, and you really need it, but this guy's using it. So then, then boss man walks around, and he sees you kind of standing there. It's like I'm just waiting, for the, waiting for the band saw. Telling grown men to share is not a. But yeah, man, I'm a firm believer that like. You have to give guys the right tools to do the job you're asking them to do. And I feel like a lot of small businesses don't do that. Um, obviously, the, the auto body business is different. Because I, I know for a fact, Snap-on trucks and Mack trucks show up, and then the mechanics buy their own shit. Yeah, I mean, every Thursday. Yeah. You see them coming in, you know. Like, if I had a, a steel chainsaw truck pull up, and I was like, hey, guys, go buy your own chainsaws for the day. They'd be like, oh, I don't think so, issue. but yeah. <laughs> yeah. How about I just use yours? <laughs> right. Tools are expensive, man. So expensive. Yeah. I mean, I have probably twenty five or thirty chainsaws. And then every so often they need bars. They need chain like a chain for one chainsaw costs like between forty and eighty bucks. Jeez. For just a chain. It adds up. Yeah. Throughout the year. Yeah. Know? I'm a believer too in Working smarter, not harder. I mean, yeah, because yeah. I mean, yep. when you have to do things the hard way. You're burning energy. You know, on like a, a, you know, a hot day, you're burning energy. I mean, you're only going to get so much done before you get burned out. Mm-hmm. So I mean, I mean, I think it's it's definitely smart to help your guys out because in the long run, I mean, man hours add up too. Yeah, and I'm I definitely believe in that as well. And that's sometimes like, you know, th- you know, the man doesn't always think about that, but us in the field. Now we think a little bit different. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and it's uh, I don't think it's just industry specific. I think it's kind of every everywhere handles it differently. Yep. Yeah, it's a business at the end of the day. I mean, yeah, you know, the people who own the company I work for. I mean, they're not in it for us. They're in it, you know, they're, for, the, well, they're, for them to make money. They I mean, go to work every day to make money, just like yeah. you do. They, they have, you know, they like have I, a, like me. I'm a small business owner. I go to work to make as much money as possible every day. Just like there. my employees come to work to make as much money as possible every day. Mm-hmm. That's why you go to work every day. Yep. Right. That's not rocket science. No. Yeah. So make the world, that's what makes the world turn. Right. Yep. So, yeah. But like in my position, you know, you have, I have a superintendent who's taking orders from, you know, someone in an office and I kind of have to, you know, play out, you know, what he was told. So, you know, if I don't follow those orders, then, you know, Things don't add up, and then, you know, yeah. you start, in their mind, you, you think they're losing money. And that's what's hard for me, too. Like, obviously, smaller scale than what you guys are doing, but, like, from the time a job gets looked at and estimated, and the scope of work gets relayed to the customer, to the job being scheduled and then being done, I have to make sure that the guy doing that job knows exactly what needs what the customer's expecting. You know what I'm saying? Like, it has yeah. to go that way. And that, right. I feel like communication is a big thing. Um, and something I want to touch base on for you guys is technology, right? So I think I'm a, in my industry, I'm a little bit 
advanced on the technology I use. Like I have iPads, laptops, um, obviously cell phones is a big thing. Um, but like from the calls coming in to doing an estimate, to creating a work order, to doing the job, to sending the invoice and then collecting the payment. I mean, it's, it's a big process for every job that goes on every day. And we oh, might yeah. do four, five, six, seven jobs a day. So technology only helps that on my s- standpoint. Do you guys utilize any of that at all, or is it very? Yeah, you know, absolutely. I mean, we got, you know, with all the electric cars coming out, we got to figure out how to fix them. Right. You know, so it's a, it's a totally different kind of car. They, they don't, it's they, true. They have electric motors. They don't, you know, you lift up the hood, there's nothing there. The trunk. Oh my god, you have like a fifty-year-old mechanic. Yeah, and then he pops the hood, and there's nothing there. Yeah, how it's do you tell him how to fix that? It's probably pissed. <laughs> you got to have a good mechanic. You know that, that that needs to be up to date, right? You know, with stuff like that, which we do. So, um, you know, on the body end, it's not going to really be much different. Yeah. Other than a lot of the panels are made out of aluminum now. Aluminum. So you yeah. need to, you know, aluminum welders and stuff like that that you right. got to have your guys trained on with and learn how to use. Yeah, but was it steel and aluminum, right? Yeah. So it's just two different types of metal. Yep. And an aluminum welder, you, you know more about that kind of stuff, than, you know, but. Don't do a lot of aluminum, but yeah, there's different applications. It's a totally different, different thing. Yeah. yeah. So it, that's something that we're going to have to learn, and we're, we're doing that now. But uh, when it comes to the actual motor, there, there is no motor, really. <laughs> right. So it's kind of, you know, we were looking at a car, uh, truck today, the new uh, Lightning Ford. It's got two electric motors in it. There's nothing above the frame. They're, the motors are right, they sit right be- in between both tires. There's two of them. Wow. There's nothing in the, the trunk or the, under the hood. So it's, it's kind of, it's interesting. Do you guys, I mean, did you guys figure it out? Do you have people that know how to? We're kind of figuring it out, yeah. That's got, that's, we got to go through. Well, I mean, that's something, too, I'm sure you deal with. And I know definitely when you were growing, you had to deal with. It's not like you're going to turn a job down or you're just going to. Figure it out. We're going to figure it out. Yeah, just like that. I mean, if that truck comes in, it's like, yep, uh, yeah, drop it off, man. Give me the keys. I'll figure it out. Yeah. (laughs) I mean. And then once you're known as a person who can do it, then, you know, you're going to get more business. Even if you have to YouTube some shit or call Ford directly or, um, you know, get a Ford Uh, representative there to teach you or explain to you what to do. It's like, yeah, well, we're going to fix it. It's nothing to be scared about. It's just something you got to do. Right. You know, so. And so the only thing that I do the same thing in my industry, right? The only thing that's different is sometimes when that learning curve is involved, you have to charge people for that because it's like, look, I I can do it, but it might take me twice as long to do it because I've never done it before. So I got, I got to charge the customer that amount. So like if I get a crazy, like a crazy tree job, right? I looked at one the other day that's on the water. The tree uprooted and it's leaning right over the pier. It's like nothing's accessible from land. You can't climb the tree. You need a crane because it's leaning over top of probably like a eighty thousand dollar pier. You go from the water or no? Yeah. So you got to get a crane that's mounted on a barge. Yeah. So I didn't say I didn't tell the customer that I couldn't do it. I just said, look, this is what I need to do it. And this was going to cost. You want to do it or not? That's cool. You know, what I'm, I don't turn shit down. Yeah. It's like, I'll figure it out. Yeah. Like, if, like, if you got the money, I can fucking do the job. Right. There is a you know? l- learning curve, though. But there's a learning curve. It's like, look, yeah. I don't own a barge-mounted crane to do this one job. But I know a guy that might yeah. know a guy that can, has access to some shit. Yeah. I'll do the job, and this is what it's going to cost. Right. <laughs> like, That's what it helps to know You want to do it or not? <laughs> right. Yeah. And it's like, I'm pretty confident nobody else in this area is going to do it any other way. No. So what do you want to do? <laughs> got to figure it out. I figure mean, out. and that's like... Part of being union, being a union contractor, you're supposed to know how to do everything. I mean, that's why, you know, yeah. all your employees went through five years of school, right? So if I hire you, you guys know how to do this, right? But, I mean, there's a lot of things. I mean, there's a lot of different aspects to, you know, the trade. So not, you know, they might give you a project and it might, you know, be something that you don't do a lot. Right. Like bending tube. Like, I don't do that a lot. And my boss, you know, gave me a little project and how to do it. I was like, oh, shit. So, you know, I, I mean, I kind of got it, and I had to, like, think about it a little bit and, like, all that. Because I don't do it a lot. In my 10, 11 yeah. years of, you know, working, I've maybe done it once or twice. 
Then you get guys who, you know, go through their whole apprenticeship and only work on copper. Now they're a journeyman, and now they got to help out a welder doing steel pipe. They're a little, you know, hesitant because they've never really done it. Right. Well, it's like, well, you're a journeyman, aren't you? Can't, yeah. can't, can't you do it? But, I mean, that's like the whole learning curve because after, like, two or three days of working with, like, with another good mechanic and – I mean, you pick up on it because you yeah. get you get the aspect of it, you know. You, you know, and look, you know, man, as a, as a, like your union, right? So you guys have like a pool of people to pick from. Yeah. From the small business side of it, if I bid a job and I get it, like that one I just described, it's a, uh, I'm very hands on. Like I have to be because I can't expect my guys to go out there and just know how I bid it and know what I'm thinking how to do this job. Right. It's like, look, this is what we're going to do. This is what I want you to do. This is what you're going to do. This is what we need. And we're going to figure it out. But that puts me on the job, hands-on, doing the work. You right. know what I'm saying? Which, I, you know, I'm not scared of. Right. I'll do that. But it's like. It's like trial and error. But well, for me, it's like I, I, I've gotten to the point where I'm so busy with other shit. Like, if I'm tied up on one job site all day, everything else takes a back seat. Right. Yeah. So, it's hard. And that's why I try to, you know, usually I charge more money for shit like that where I got to be involved so much. Yeah. Which you have to. Like, like if, you know, now that you're in the office, if you get a job where you have to be involved six hours a day on that one repair. Yeah. Look, you got to charge for your time. Pretty much. I mean, you know, it, if, if the job that I'm running, I, it's, you know, I, I got to yeah. figure out how to you gotta, shit. Yeah, you have to. So, just like today, we had to deliver a car with not a, a part missing on it. It's because we can't get the parts. No tire. Yeah, no Go tire. Get, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, man. Go get your car, man. Yeah. No tire. But it, it's, it's kind of do what you got to do kind of thing. Yeah. Well, and that's but like where, like, in what I do, you know, I take my orders from my superintendent, and then, I mean, he has to go do something else. It's up to me to figure it out with my guys. Right. You know what I mean? He, he can't be there to hold my hand. It's like, hey, Ben, yeah. we need this to happen. Yeah. You're, you're the guy. You, I'll you, be honest, You're going to make that happen. That right there, though, I think my guys thrive on. And that's what makes, you know, I, I have great guys all the way around, from the office positions to the, the foreman to the laborers. They thrive on that. Like, if I give them a challenging day, oh yeah, they're like, yeah, we're going to figure this out. Yeah. We'll get it done. You know, because if not, you, you get into this routine where it's just, like, monotonous and it's yeah. brainless. Right. And then you just, like, dread going to work every day. Right. It's like you want the challenge. Yeah. It's like, look, man, I don't want to do the same shit 10 hours a day every day. He's like, you know, it's like, look, give me some challenging shit where I need to think about it and then give me the resources I need to actually do the job. But there's also a lot of guys who they like to have the easy job. They like to come into work, just do their eight hours. They don't want to think a lot. They want to do something – but that, yeah. I mean, but that that's not me, though. That's, that's not me either. And, then, and that's like when I showed up to this company, I made it known that I was a foreman at my last company. I didn't hire on here as a foreman, but I made it known that I want to be a foreman. And, I, you know, yeah. I tried to outwork everyone to prove that. Like, look, like yeah. I'm, I'm your guy. And yeah. it, I mean, it paid off. They made me a foreman after a couple of weeks. And But, I, I mean, I like that as well. I think something I learned as a child is just leadership, and I feel like a lot of people lack that. Leadership so definitely – Definitely something that a lot of people overlook. Yeah, and, if, sure. and if you can be a good leader, I mean, you can, you can, like, you can accomplish a lot of things. Well, Guys your, will respect you as well. What's your schedule like now? Are you working on the weekends every weekend or no? Yeah, we just finished a big job that we're working 60, 70 hours a week. But usually your, your standard job's uh, 40 hours a week, and then anything after 40 is overtime, so yeah. time and a half. Oh, and every, anything after 60 weekends. is double time. Yeah. Nick, Nick doesn't work weekends. Yeah. yeah, but if I show up on a week, <laughs> if I show up on a weekend, I know I'm making good He's money. Like, so that's kind of yeah. I mean, but that in in Nick, construction, that's how you make your money. Yeah, I mean, if yeah. if I only worked forty hours a week, yeah. you know, all year, I made Both okay money. Like but yeah. if I want to, you know, make extra money, I mean, that's going to work extra time. Yeah, and that and that's with anything. If you want to make money, you got you got to work. I, I work. I, I, I work six days a week. Yeah, like Saturday, I run four crews every day. Saturday, I might try to run just one crew. But it's like, look, I got a couple jobs I need to knock out. This is what we're going to do. Yeah. And, you know, is what it is. Anyone I know that's successful works more than 40, 40 hours a week. Yeah. I mean, it's just. Yeah. Well, Nick, I think you guys make your extra time, like, during the week, though. Because you work, what, like, 14-hour days. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're tr we truly work for the weekend. Yeah. You know, we're putting in everything we got Monday right. through Friday. And it's just and then a reprieve 
Yeah. On the weekend. Which is cool, man, because most mechanic shops, they're open. They're open every Saturday. Like a lot 10, 12-hour days on Saturdays. Yeah. yeah. So. I mean, that's an extra day. You don't got to drive up the road. That's an extra day. You know, you don't. No, yeah, yeah, but you got a fucking weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Like me, I, I like when I say I work Saturdays, I work like five or six hours on Saturday getting the guys going, collecting some money, looking yeah. at jobs. Like, but I'm home by noon, mm-hmm. you know. And then I have Saturday afternoon and Sunday. I'm not retail. You know what I'm saying? Like, I yeah. kind of like to pick my own schedule. I think there was a point in time when Burt Mills was open on the weekends. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, my grandfather took it over and basically said, you know, that's no mas. <laughs> not going to do that. Yeah. <laughs> so. I like to drink on Friday nights. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you don't it's have gotta, to, I mean, yeah. shit, why yeah. would you? I mean, yeah. So. I'm glad I don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man. If if like your schedule changed and all of a sudden you had to work like a ten hour day on Saturdays, you'd be like, "That's life changing." Wow. <laughs> yeah, but I will tell you. I mean, when when I work Saturdays, a lot of people they show up a little bit different on Saturdays. It always has a little bit of a different feel because guys know they're getting paid more. Yeah. yeah. They know it's kind of you know it's something extra. Yep. People usually aren't as you know down on yeah. a Saturday. People are always a little more. It's not Wednesday. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Yep. Then they, I mean, then it's like your Friday. It's like, all right, man, we're going to knock this out, make some more money, and then, you know, you know go out tonight. Yeah. So. So what I do is I usually pay cash on Saturdays. And it's like, look, you're getting, everybody that works Saturday is getting this much money. This is the job for the day. I don't care if it takes you two hours or 13 hours. You're getting the same amount of money. The faster you get the job done, the faster you go home. Well, see, and that's something, and too. You, You've never seen motherfuckers work so fast. Yeah. <laughs> so and that's and that's something I have to deal with as well as a foreman is the guys get paid by the hour. And I mean, even motherfuckers will say that. I get paid by the hour. So it's to try to get them to do something, you know, fast is almost sometimes challenging because I mean there's nothing they're not gonna be rewarded for, you know, finishing it fast. You know right. what I mean? So but it's also my job to make sure they do it. So it's if it's not finished on time, it's hey man, what's going on? Yeah. Then you got a guy over there just you know taking two hours to weld one joint. And you got to try to motivate him a little bit, and that's where the whole leadership thing comes in. You can't, you know, I mean, you just start being a dick to him. A lot of people, I mean, they're going to lay down on you, on you even harder. Yeah. Right. But sometimes you get lucky, you get some good guys, and every once in a while you you don't get good guys, and those guys usually don't last too long. No, that's what we got going on. People like want to work for my dad. They they enjoy working for him, and that's that's there's something to be said for that because you know if you hate your boss, yeah, that's no one's going to really want to do anything. Oh, I'm, and gu- I'm guilty of that. Want to work? I, I've worked for people where, I mean, it's not like I didn't do anything, but I definitely didn't work as hard for some people than I did for others. Yeah, I mean if yeah. I mean if I don't respect you that much as exactly. a boss or something, nah, man, I'm not I'm not giving you all I got. And I know that no. sounds fucked up, but I mean, no. You know, I'm not yeah. perfect. Very true. I mean, yeah, I, I, I try to. I'm the boss, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm the small business owner. I'm yeah. the owner. I'm the people who need to want to work for you. I got to keep guys that like me, that want to work for me, that want to help me make more money. Yeah. And to do that, you got to give and take a little bit. Like I, I see that, you know, um, it's a hundred degrees out right yeah. now and humid as shit. Yeah. And it sucks out there. We're not doing easy work. It no. sucks. So, like, I'm I'm like, look, man, I tell me, like, myself and some of my other office guys, like, we take drinks to the guys. We take Gatorades. We yeah. take Red Bulls. It's like, look, do your thing. We try to make it as best as possible of a work yeah, environment. Exactly. Like, it's like, your work environment sucks, yeah. but you, you could be doing this somewhere else, and it would be even worse. Yeah, I've, been yeah. Working on, I've been working on boilers all summer. You go to take a break and still 100 degrees outside. It's like... That's why I'm saying, like, if you can figure out a smart way, get a game plan before you go in there and work, I mean, then you're going to save yourself some energy. It's like, all right, let's set up out here, figure it out. Then when we go in there, we got minimal work. Yeah. But then, like, a lot of guys, you know, just, you know, don't think like that. They try to do it the hard way, and then, you know, all of a sudden you're tired, and the last half of the day, nothing was accomplished. Yeah. No, we definitely got that going for us. People truly want to work there, which is. Which is cool. pretty cool. I mean, that yeah. and that that also creates a better work environment. Oh yeah, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Like, you know, people come to work happy. Yep. And I think the leadership sets the tone for that. Mm-hmm. Like, I make it a point to be the first one at my shop every morning, 
And then as people come in to clock in, I shake their hand. I say, good morning. How yeah. are you today? Like, welcome to, you know, just pretty much like, hey, what's up? Like, how are you today? Like, let's start the tone a certain way. Right. Yeah. Like, I don't want you to come in and all, be all pissed off all the time. It's like, hey, yeah. you're going to come in, you're going to shake the boss's hand, and he's going to say, hey, how are you today? It's, yeah. like, it's like a fine line. Let's go. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's time to go to work. Yeah, you can definitely tell when some guys come in, you can tell they've like, fought with their wife all night or some shit. Yeah, or yeah. drank all night off. or yeah. whatever. Don't, yeah. that don't ruin everyone else's time because, you know, you're hungover. You're pissed. Yeah. We, all, we were all laughing, having a good time, ready for work. And as soon as you walked in, now everyone's pissed. You blew yep. it. You blew it. Oh, man. A bad attitude is contagious. Oh, yeah, for sure. So contagious. For sure. It's terrible. Yep. You don't – You. I've fired guys before just because it's not that they don't come to work. It's not that they're late. It's not that because they suck at what they do. Bad attitude. Yeah. yeah. Don't complain about the tools you have. Don't complain about the trucks. Don't complain about the heat. Stop. No, Just yeah. stop complaining. Yeah. Or you're gone. Yeah. Because that shit, when you have 15 guys working, if one guy complains it first thing in the morning, is. everybody's got a bad attitude. Right. Yeah. So I, that's why I make it a point to be the first one at the shop, shaking everybody's hand, saying, welcome to work. How are you today? Yeah. You know, let, let, at least let, get, let's go to work. Yeah. <laughs> like, at least start off good. Yeah. We got to start good. Yeah. Because if you don't... It could go downhill after that, <laughs> believe me. It mo- most of the time, it does. Yeah. yeah. But if you start it off good, it can only go down. Yeah. If it already starts down, it's already fucked. Like you'll never get it up. Yeah. <laughs> no question, man. Yeah. And I, that that's been a big part of what I do. That's why I'm like even on Saturdays, like I'm I'm the only leadership position that comes in on Saturdays because the guys that want to work Saturdays, I want to be like, hey, I'm here too. Yeah. yeah, and we're gonna do this, and we're gonna get the fuck out of here, and we're all gonna make some money. Right. Let's make it happen. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. You need people to want to work for you. Yeah. yeah. They want to want to come to work. Yeah. Now you see guys that have a leadership position, but they also don't work hard. No one respects them. No. Yeah. I mean, it's just. I mean, it, we're all grown men, you know. I mean, people can sniff that out a mile away. Yeah. Like, I mean, fuck this guy. We're doing all this. He's over there looking at his phone. You know. Phone's a big thing, too. And I know, like, when I was younger, when I first got in, when I was 20, like, you know, I That's probably... That's been a game changer, though. Yeah, I, was, I wasn't I was probably, you know, the best employee at some times, but <laughs> I was still on a flip phone. Phones weren't a thing. I was T- just T- fucking T- off... I, yeah, I was, I was just fucking off smoking cigarettes or something, you just know? Just smoking cigarettes in the sea can. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. You know, like <laughs> but now, I mean, you give guys something to do, and as soon as you walk away, you turn around and look at them, just looking on their phone. What are you doing? But these kids are like nineteen; they're twenty. Yeah, they like they it almost uh, they almost don't comprehend like what they're doing wrong. No, Instagram is their life. Oh my god! Well, you know what's sad? I, I know guys in their fifties that are addicted to that shit. Every chance they get, I can't even believe it. Mm-hmm. I've pretty much erased everything. No, I would say I'm I'm on page with you. It's not a uh, generational thing. It's really not. I would say YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, shit, even TikTok is a fucking. It's across all generations right now. It is. It really is. I still is. don't even understand what it is. But but a lot of the... You're not on any social media. I think I still have an Instagram. But, yeah, pretty... I think it's, like, dis... Whatever. Disabled. Right. Whatever it is. I deleted everything. I deleted yeah, I deleted to, Facebook in 2009. I can't remember my password, so I can't delete it. I'm trying to yeah. delete everything. I, I don't know, like man. any I'm, of it. I'm, I'm on here doing the social media thing. You, you're in business a different position. Wise. I yeah. really... I personally don't look at it a whole lot. I mean, it's, well, I really think business, it's like, it's just different. like a, it's senseless shit to look at. Yeah. yeah. It really is. And that's yeah. what I realized with Instagram. It's like, I would just get on and start scrolling. It's, what the it's, fuck it's am it's I addicting. looking at? Yeah. yeah. I got rid of it. And I mean, I don't even miss it. I mean, it's like you said, it's senseless. Yeah. Facebook, after I dropped out of college, I was like, most of my friends on this Facebook are from Salisbury. I'm never going to see these people again. Yeah. Why do I give a or shit some, what they're doing? Or some, Crackhead from high school. It's like, right. Why do you care about what his opinion on politics is? Yeah. No. I no, don't. No one That's cares. wasting my time. Nobody I, cares. Yeah. Nobody cares. Nobody. Zero people. And the people think people care. Right. Why would you Why would you put this out there? <laughs> I don't know, man. It's crazy. Yeah. I got the Snapchat. I still got that, but I'm... I'm done with the Snapchat, man. I'm I got rid of that, it. like, a year ago, probably. Because they're selling our data to China? Snapchat. Well, that's why I'm not on TikTok. But that's Snapchat, like, I don't like the th- I don't like the concept behind Snapchat. But that's me as like a father 
and as a husband, it's just it's just like it's set up to be deceptive, really. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's how the whole fucking thing's set up. Yeah. Like, you can send something to your buddies, and then it can never be seen again. Yeah. So, like, everybody's on there not doing good shit. I've been shit. saying that for years, man. I mean, the whole fucking thing is deceptive. You can send so like someone as, a picture as, without anyone else knowing. So, as a married man, why would I want that? You don't want that. I don't. So, uh, did you get rid of it, or did Carly make you get rid of it? No, no, I got rid of it myself. Because, <laughs> I, I mean, I didn't really use it a whole lot. Yeah. But then I found I was, like, just wasting time on it. And I was yeah. like, man, this is stupid. Yeah. Like, I don't want to see... Fucking Ben sent me Snapchats of him trying to fucking shotgun beers. Yeah. <laughs> I can see stupid. that in person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, why not see it in a person? And then, and then, like, you, you realize you're wasting time on it, and then it's not being productive, and then it's just it's well, just I, not good for anything that I have going on right now. What a gateway for people to send someone something without someone else seeing it. I mean, it's what that's the whole concept. It's of it. terrible. Well, shit. When the internet well, when it, the internet first came out, a lot of guys got in trouble with that shit. Well, when they, when they realized they could get they on the internet and talk happen. to different women, yeah, I'm sure even women talking to different men. Who's sitting there going, "Well, this is a bulletproof plan." <laughs> yeah, no one else can see. She'll this. Never My wife know. will never know what yeah, I'm doing. Exactly. Then, they, then they just exit out and don't realize. You know, there's a history <laughs> page. <laughs> Go back and look at the history, yeah. and there's just all Man. this disgusting so things. That's what's cool about our generation: early 30s, late 20s. We I truly guess. remember flip phones. We well. I went through college with a flip phone. Yeah. I graduated college in 2011. We didn't have any of that. High school, I didn't have a phone. College, I had a flip phone. No smartphone, no social media, really. I might have had a Facebook, but it was like, you got to, like, fucking dial in on the fucking laptop and shit. Yeah, I mean, I remember at Salisbury in the dorm, I mean, we had to plug it in and dial into the fucking shit. It was horrible. (laughs) Yeah. I mean... I mean, we just. I didn't want to do. I didn't want to do homework anyway. And I now mean, I got to wait for this shit to dial up. Me and Ben lived together in Salisbury, and uh, I really. I mean, fuck, dude, it's been so fucking long. But I really think it's just been. It was. We would all come back to the house on like a Thursday night and be like, "Hey, well, this is who's going to Brew River. This is who's having a house party, and we can do go over here, UP, and figure this out." Yeah. <laughs> like, well, okay, you well, had so, a set. You had to a set do it plan. all. Yeah. <laughs> You had a set plan. Yeah. yeah. You actually had to plan. But now social, social media has changed the game. It's changed everything, yeah. man. Even for older people. I mean, it, you know, older people. <laughs> even, even for people, you know. Like Dude, there's people in their 60s and 70s on Facebook. Yeah. Oh, Facebook yeah. is fucking all ages. Oh, yeah. Which is which just blows my mind. It is. It, uh, I, I think that they're more into it now than the people that originally got into it. Well, the people that originally got into Facebook was college kids for parties. And now they're And then all of a sudden, it's like, I'm on Facebook, and I see, well, my mother-in-law is on Facebook, or my, my grandmother's on Facebook. It's like, well, I can't say what I want to say. Yeah. Can't say anything. <laughs> can't say anything. Everyone's going to see it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not into the social media. No, that's no I, question. Yeah. I saw that that was bullshit a long time ago. It is. It's just but it a, is so c- consuming of everybody right yeah. now. Oh, yeah. And it's just... It's noticeable. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, it's not just where, oh, man, that might be fucked up. That might be a problem. It's like, no, it is a problem, and people spend a fuckload of time doing that. I'm starting to see it with YouTube. Just, it's, YouTube's basically just like a, you scroll and look at videos. I mean, you're, it's no one that you know. Yep. But it's definitely addicting. I mean, it's a time, it's a time killer. Yeah. I prefer YouTube. Look at this guy getting eaten by a snake. (laughs) Look at, and then look at this guy, you know, eat a hundred hot dogs. You know, it's just like what the what then the after world? then after about forty five minutes, you're like, what so the what fuck did I just, did I just do? Yeah, yeah. It's two <laughs> o'clock in the morning. Yeah, exactly. I, got, I got work at six. Yeah. I'm sitting here scrolling through this stupid shit. Yeah. yeah, it's stupid, man. But you can also learn a lot from it. I mean, you can. I mean, there's a YouTube. lot of things. There's a lot of things on YouTube. I mean, that I look up and you know. Maybe I don't learn a lot, but I mean, it's informative. It's something I've re- I'm really interested in. Like, I mean, that's why you have yeah. a YouTube channel. I mean, people look at those reviews. This you know? podcast is going on YouTube. Yeah, sure. I guess I shouldn't down YouTube. Man. I mean, podcasts well, and YouTube are stupid. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I'll be honest though. I prefer YouTube over fucking television. Oh, it's for sure. Television is the worst. Yeah, it's hard I to pay, find something to watch now. I think I pay two fifty a month for Comcast for my kids to watch Peppa Pig. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I mean, that's definitely a trend too. People are, they're, they're stopping the, 
yeah. TV. People don't pay for TV anymore. It, it needs to stop. Yeah. Like, I've talked to Carly a few times about, like, we need to stop paying this much money for what we're getting. Because like, yeah. we don't watch it. The kids yeah. watch commercials, but we can put YouTube Peppa Pig up on TV. You can, easily. I mean. Who, who is this Peppa Pig? It's like a children's show. Is it like Spongebob? No. It's like But pigs. it's a pig. It's pigs. Yeah. Yeah. I was fun there. Yeah. <laughs> ben has no children. Rugrats? <laughs> hey, Arnold. Rugrats, old school. I have, yeah. a, I have a niece. I have a niche. And she's, she's afraid of me most of the time. Sadie. I think I fucked with her one too many times now. I've lost, she, so she's, lost, she's lost she's all trust in me. Yeah. That's funny. They just run to me now. Yeah. Nick's the cool uncle. It'll change. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go back and forth, I'm sure. Yeah. But I, in the workplace, the social media stuff mm-hmm. is crazy. Yeah. I mean, everybody sees it. I mean, it's it's in front of everybody all the time. And I, what's even crazier to me is I think people of all ages know that it's addictive and know that it's bad for you, they and they still they it. still do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I purposefully am trying to not like, do it. Like Facebook will say, "Hey, we're going to put ads in front of you," and you still get on there just to look at the ads and the bullshit that they feed you. Right. So it's it's like you almost can't get away from it, like subconsciously or something. It's yeah, like, it's crazy. Even if I'm trying to just look at, like, a Redskins thing on, on the Internet, you got 8 million things in the way of you reading the dumb article <laughs> Yeah, that you probably didn't want to I just want to see who's injured. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to find an injury report. No. That is the new you medium. You can't get them out of there either. The Internet is the new medium that they put shit in front of you with. Yeah. Yeah. You can't even read the article. You don't that read you newspapers. On. You don't really watch TV anymore. It's all right in front of your face and it is. In, in your pocket all the time. It's crazy how much money there is too. I mean, data is worth more than fuel. I mean, the more you use your phone, I mean, the more. Yeah. I don't know how it works. Someone's getting I do fucking. Paid. I mean, I fucking I do Facebook ads and Instagram ads and YouTube ads and I, I pay for all that because I know people. That's what people use. It's it's in front mm-hmm. of them. That's where I want to be as yeah. a, as a I business mean, owner. It's like, know. look, I want to be in front of them, and that's where they are. Yeah, like, marketing works. I yeah. think out of all your ads, I think the best one is the one at uh, Safeway. Oh yeah, the the grocery you dividers. Realize how many people talk about that? Yeah, the grocery no, dividers. They're at, they're at all the stores. You can in get rid, County. You can get rid of everything. Yeah, the grocery dividers. Everyone sees that. What? Yeah, I, I saw that. I was like, man, G made it. Yeah, <laughs> he, he has He's these little these dividers things? in Safeway. Dude, I've been paying for that for like two years now. Dude, everyone everyone sees them. Really? Yeah, Bright you gotta, green. You go get your groceries. You divide your stuff with McKenzie Contract and shit. That's great. Yeah, it's good to hear that. It's great, yeah. and it's very clear months, too. Twenty four months later, who? the first person tells me that it's actually working. Dude. <laughs> with the who big needs line the internet lettering? when you have the grocery store? Yeah, yeah. Those are very effective. I did hit that hard. As soon as COVID hit, yeah. like everybody was like rushing to the stores. Yes, that's like, genius. I was like, well, I, I need to be in the grocery stores. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's working. There you go. That's funny. It is, man. I mean, marketing definitely works, man. I mean, you got to put your name out there. Well, I mean, I mean, you have you, a killer spot here, too, on Route 4. I mean, yeah, it doesn't get much better than that. Yeah. I mean, you have to be out there. You got to be in front of people. And that's because I do residential work. I mean, obviously what you do is different. Yeah. And I, it seems like Burt Mills does a lot of insurance claims. Like, you don't really yeah. go out there to try to advertise, like, hey, we'll do your oil change for $55 or whatever. I would do that, but I think my, we're not there on the weekends, and I think that's the only time you can do it. Yeah. Well, you guys have a client base that you've had. I mean, you're, how long has your shop been there? Since, uh, I think, 1959 or 60, something like that. Stay on the shore. Yeah, probably. 1960. 60. Yeah, but we, I think we have like something in the uh, <laughs> the paper or the um, the book at the churches and stuff around the area. Right. But I don't think in Montgomery County you're allowed to advertise as much. So tra- Trader Joe's doesn't do the, uh, the dividers at the fucking yeah. <laughs> checkout. I think we walked yeah. in there with a stack of, like, things, and they were like, no. Yeah. Fuck hey, you. white trash. Yeah. <laughs> Get out of my store. <laughs> Stupid redneck. <laughs> yeah. All right. Kind of a pain in the butt to advertise around there. But, yeah, well, just a word of mouth, really. Just well, it's a very populated place, too. So Yeah, there's big neighborhoods everywhere and everyone, yeah. you know, so pretty much surrounding the shop. It's just a great location, really. 
Cool, man. Yep. Yeah, I need new tires. <laughs> Just there. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I need new tires. <laughs> More on the plate. Um, all right, man. So, to kind of wrap up, I mean, I appreciate you guys coming out. Yeah. Uh, good time. I man. think it's been kind of like a cool perspective to kind of yeah. just see the different industries and young people actually that work hard for a living and do shit and they're fed up with the government bullshit. I mean, and I don't think it's just us. I know no. we, we're all related and we hang out and shit, but it's not just us. It can't be. A lot of people feel the same way. There's, so there's no a question. The majority of America is like us. Yes. Yes. I would say so. It's the backbone. Yeah. The guys the that get up and go to work every day. Yeah. The silent majority. The silent majority. Yeah, there's no question. 100%. The media doesn't like talking about us. They don't. Yeah. It's, so not, a good, that, it's not a good story. No. Well, Are you going to end it on that? We can be boring, but you know, hard fuck it. Day. Well, we never talked about religion. Yeah. What else? What, what other? I mean, we didn't talk about politics. I think most people can kind of... De- kind of figure out what our politics are if they want to really yeah. dive into it. But yeah. Like doing what we want to do, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it doesn't take a genius to figure <laughs> yeah, out. <right. laughs> nah, man, it was a good time. Thanks Absolutely. for having us. Yeah. All right, guys, maybe, no maybe problem. We'll, maybe we'll be back in a couple months. Let's do it. I'm in. Yeah, a couple months. You know, if I can't find anybody else to do it, y'all All right. are yeah. more, more than welcome to come back. your backup plan. Yeah. <laughs> the Nick and Ben backup, <laughs> backup plan. plan. Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely the name of the podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Appreciate it, man. Thanks. See you.